There is a new radical plan to fight climate change. In a new paper, a group of scientists are arguing that we could refreeze the poles of Earth by spraying them with aerosols. The team says this would both cool the planet and slow the rise of sea levels worldwide. We've done that issue on this show a couple of times. So joining us this morning is climate modeler Dan Vizioni. Welcome to your morning. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you. All right. I well, hear aerosols and refreezing the poles. I'm going to need you to explain how that would work. Sure. So the idea that has been around already for some time, um, Paul Crudzen, who's a famous Nobel Prize in chemistry, uh, proposed the idea in 2005, is to mimic what actually already happened sometimes due to volcanic eruptions, which is that a large amount of sulfate is released into the stratosphere. The stratosphere, that part of the atmosphere that is a lot more stratified, is a lot less turbulent. And so things stay a lot more. And what we focused on in this study in particular was to imagine whether something like this could be done in a feasible way um, closer to the poles, so closer to the Arctic, because that's where a lot of the warming is happening right now. The, the Arctic is warming four times as fast as the rest of the world. And so our question was, would it be feasible to do something, like, technologically speaking, mm -hmm. would it be feasible to do something like this? All right, so in order to deliver the amount of aerosols necessary that we we're sort of demonstrating in that picture we just showed, it would take about 175,000 flights for more than 125 planes per year. And those planes would release, as we showed in that picture, large amounts of carbon emissions themselves. So how can we fight climate change with a plan that involves generating such a large amount of emissions? Right, that's a good idea, and we did, we did look at that. So the first thing that is that that number looks very big, but it's actually the amount of flights that fly out of a big airport in the U.S. in a month. So it is big, but it's not as incredibly big. And the second thing that we need to consider is that the thing that here is being proposed is to go up to the stratosphere, release the particles, and go back down, which is incredibly different from the act that normal planes do, which is to go up and then loiter for hours as they move horizontally from one place to the other. So when you look at the actual flying time, the amount of carbon dioxide that would be released is incredibly smaller compared to the impact of aviation, which is also only 2% of all carbon emissions. So yes, this is an imperfect um, solution, but what we have showed in other modeling studies is that it could be one of the most feasible ways to rapidly reduce temperatures. So we know that everything in the environment is connected. One thing always affects the other. So besides cooling the poles, what effect would this have uh, on the planet as a whole? Right, that's an excellent question, and that's definitely what we're looking into. We are not proposing that we already know everything and we should, we, we should start tomorrow. And the idea behind our study was to point out the fact that this is feasible enough that we should be seriously considering studying it. But for sure, we have collaborations with a lot of uh, other climate scientists and ecologists um, doing it good. The, the point was that it could be done maybe also immediately, but we would don't know if it could be done in a good way. There's still a lot that we need to study. So for instance, as you said, we still need to understand a lot more what would happen to all these particles when they fall down. We know what, it, what, what they do because we have already big sulfate emissions from the surface, but this would be spread in a different way. Or for instance, uh, if we change the energetic fluxes by cooling one hemisphere more than the other, that could reduce in changes in precipitation also at lower latitudes. Dan Vizioni, great to have you on today because it's always great to learn about new possibilities that are being explored in science. Good to have you here. Thank you. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here, or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.